What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. Today I'm going to be talking about the new shipping container prefab and showing you all the stuff you can do with it, which is actually quite a lot. I've gone really deep down the rabbit hole here, and I'm pleasantly surprised at how easy these are to work with. So if you like what you see here, you'll still have, at the time of release, about a week and a half to grab them in the Atomic Shop. But before we get started, you know what I'm going to say. If you love what I do here and you're interested in helping to support this wonderful little channel, consider joining our Patreon family. Some of the tricks I'll be showing you in today's videos were requested by patrons, so if you want a more direct line to me and more input into what you'll see in upcoming videos, head on over to patreon.com slash kikibee or click that link down in the description. And of course, join us over on Instagram at kikibeeplays. We would love to see you there. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at those containers. First off, the sort of basic stats. They're a little bigger than a 1x2 foundation, and just over one wall high. There's an open and a closed version, which is not actually as pointless as it sounds. Um, you can place a total of 10 containers in your camp, and all 10 will only cost you 2% of your build budget, which is really a bargain. There is currently only the yellow one, but I have a feeling there will be new colors as upcoming first rewards or scoreboard ranks. I could be wrong, it's just a guess, but I think they'll do something similar to what they did with the Backwoods Bungalow. At least, I hope so and they would be really smart not to try and sell us reskinned versions for another 700 atoms apiece. So now let's take a look at what you can actually do with them. To start, stacking them is pretty easy compared to just about anything else in this build system. The upper container needs to be at least half on the bottom one, and it seems to need at least one end to be supported by the lower one as well. You can also stack them as high as your build area will allow, and unlike with most prefabs, these don't have a foundation so you can place them on floors, roofs, underground, and probably even on pre-existing world structures, though I haven't had a chance to try that yet. Now, for those of you who like some privacy or a false sense of security in your open containers, it's really easy to place walls in them, and there are a couple of ways to do it. The first way is simply to snap foundations into the container, then destroy the container with the flamethrower trap and put up whatever walls you like. Add a doorway on the front, divide it into rooms, or even put up full wallpapered walls and a roof if you like your container to look fancy on the inside and hobo on the outside. You can even blueprint a complete structure with foundations, walls, roofs, and shipping container, and place it anywhere you like. Just pay attention to the height that you place it at, because the container will snap down to ground level when you put it down, so you could end up with your roof sticking out at the top, or your floor disappearing under the container floor. You can also just remove any floors so that you have essentially floating walls inside the container. And also, I recommend using smooth wall types inside, like the warehouse or the metal walls, since the uneven surfaces of things like brick or wood walls can clip through the outside of the container and look kind of stupid. Your other option for adding walls inside requires one of the catwalks from the Atomic Shop. If you don't already know this trick, it just involves blueprinting a wall with a catwalk attached, plus any floor decor object which will then allow you to place it anywhere you like. I had not actually heard of this trick until just a few weeks ago, so I wanted to say thanks to Jack O'Mara for explaining it to me over on Reddit. It has been a really big help and is yet another reason to love the catwalks. In addition to being able to place walls in your container this way, which works even if it shows red while you're trying to place it, by the way, you can once again blueprint this whole thing. Just be sure to include the catwalks and floor objects, and then you can place it anywhere you like. This could be useful if you wanted to create, like, a little colony of shipping container homes or something, and you wouldn't have to spend time lining up your walls over and over again. Or if you wanted to blueprint a few simple container buildings with your basic camp needs in them to make an easily movable camp that you can just pop down when you move to a new location. Now the closed containers. There are a few interesting things you could do with these, which basically all involve glitching your way in with a cooking station on a small rug. Since you asked, Brian, you can use them to hide your shelter entrances. And one thing I like most about doing glitched builds inside of these is that unlike with boarded up existing houses or other world structures that you glitch into, here you can destroy the container while you're working, so you're able to walk in and out without having to exit build mode and use your cooking station a million times while you're building. These also make a really great blueprintable generator shed. Just glitch inside, place your generator, which I already did, and then use a wall conduit on a small sign to connect to your generator. At this point, you can blueprint the entire thing, so when you place it down in the future, all you'll have to do is go inside, pick up that sign and place it once inside the container, then pick it up and move it to the outside. Now you can wire up your whole camp and you're good to go. 
Here's a really fun one that was a patron request. Brian wanted to know about creating a hidden entrance for an underground build, and I loved this idea. So in order to do that, place some foundations in front of your container. Then you're going to move this one a bit closer. It'll be clearer in just a minute. And then snap your second foundation into the container and go ahead and destroy the container. Now, if we snap another foundation inside, you can see that it needs to stick out just a little bit past this middle bar thing here so that you can snap a staircase to it. So that's roughly how much you need to move that first foundation. Now we're gonna grab a stool with a back on it. The base game ones work fine, but I like the pink sprinkles. And put it onto a little rug. Normally I would use a terminal on a rug for glitching under the world. But in this case, the terminal is too tall and bulky and it intersects with the container. So pop that rug and stool onto the stairs with the stool facing the foundation. When you get off the stool, you'll exit to the back, which will then pop you down the stairs and underground. Go ahead and bring your stairs out and adjust the height until just a tiny bit of the stool is visible above the ground. And now you can repair the container and glitch under the map and do your thing. I also thought it would be fun to add a little hidden room onto this secret underground entrance. So I placed an open container with the open side facing the closed container, so that when you glitch into the closed container, you can just walk right in here. You can decorate this any way you like and make yourself a little secret lair or whatever, and then you can use your cooking station to get back out and just walk on out of the closed one. Now for another great patron request. You guys are on fire, by the way. Keep them coming. The makeshift mega mansion and the shipping containers are an absolutely fantastic combination. So if you want something that screams wasteland, but you don't want to put in a ton of work, this is the way to go. You can place the containers nice and snug up against the mansion on all sides with no clipping issues or anything. You can even put one up on top of the structure if you like. I don't really know why you'd want to, but hey, no judgment here. Uh, the combination that I personally like best is one container facing inward by the stairs on the ground level like this. I would add a wall in here if you're using the open one or use a closed container and then stack an open one on top to create a little L shape with the opening facing the upper deck of the mansion. This way you can really easily access the upper level by using the mansion stairs. And now if you use your anywhere column blueprint, you can snap one and a half columns underneath the upper container on both corners. And the whole thing looks supported and realistic and matches all of the metal struts and things on the mansion prefab really well. So there you go, Charles. I hope that answers your question. So that's it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something and I was able to answer any questions you might have had about the shipping containers and maybe show you a few new ways to use them. Don't forget to make sure that you're subscribed and you've turned on channel notifications so you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing video. I will be doing a full shipping container build soon and you won't want to miss that. If you like this video and are interested in joining our Patreon family and helping to support this channel, check out that link in the description. Of course, join us over on Instagram at KikiBplays. And with that, folks, take care of yourselves be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.